Coach Guido coming at you with a miserable Monday, my friends. So I touch a nerve often when I talk about uh, bad teams, matchmaker, that kind of thing. Not just the miserable Monday showing you all the bad things that happen that everybody deals with. Although what I'm going to talk about today, everybody deals with as well. But when you start to talk about you know bad teams and bad match matchmaker and all that, then we get all kinds of different opinions, which is all good. I know there's a significant amount of people who'd love to see uh, skill-based matchmaking in whatever version that it happens to come out. And if we do that, you know, is it you have 15 players, so you have to have the same amount of various skill levels. Say you have two, three thousand win eights, four, two thousand win eights, whatever you end up doing. That maybe it's WTR that Wargaming uses. Maybe it's a new system they come up with in order to do match skill-based matchmaking. Whatever. So there's that kind of skill base. There's the other one that's more of a ladder system. So it's different skill levels and, you know, your copper, you know, steel, silver, gold level, whatever. And then you play within that. And if you do well enough, you move up to the next. If you do poor enough, you get relegated. A lot of online PvP games have systems like that. So it's not that unusual. Uh, I suppose there could be a semi, uh, to some extent, a semi combination of the two, but in general, obviously, not in general, but definitely for World of Tanks, they haven't done anything like that. What they have is a tiering system, and the player skill doesn't have anything to do with it, at least according to what everyone thinks, and no one's been able to prove that they use it or that they use skill. All right, so. <laughs> So there's a couple of options there. I am as close right now as I have ever been to going, you know what, just do it. Because I, I get tired of dealing with, I'm just going to say bad teams, bad players. I am sure there are players much better than me that get tired of dealing with me. So I, the mea culpa there, I get it. I, I understand that. And when I say I'm cl as close to that, I'm, I'm not advocating a skill-based matchmaking. But it might be nice on occasion to have one where at least I know the people that are in the game are at a, are at a certain skill level. The thing is I don't run any of the, the win eight, whatever it is. I can't even think of the word for the mod anymore that everybody has always been up in arms. And it's become kind of a, a lesser thing at this point in the game because you can opt out of it with anonymizer so it's not as, I don't know, annoying, I guess, as it used to be, although a lot of people still use it. And you can kind of get an idea of the skill level of the other players. I don't know the skill level of other players other than by what they're doing in the game and then if I look at it afterwards. And I will occasionally troll through some of the, especially the top tier tanks, or people who do really well or really poor, and kind of look at it, and generally you're going to find the good players doing well and the poor players doing poorly, although there are examples of that not happening. So I'm as close, I would say, today as ever, to going, man, it would be nice, I think, at some point to do some skill-based matchmaking and see how that turns out, to be quite honest, because this is extremely frustrating. Now, I get hit by the BZ-68, and I shoot and completely miss him. This game was the last game of a night, and it was not a great night. In the last week or so, or 30-something games, I guess seven days, I think it was, or maybe it's 30 days, I'm at like a 30% win rate. Right, that was all over the place, but I think it's the last 30 days, 30% win rate. And this was another bad day right here. And this was the last game of the night. Well, watch this one. This is awesome, too. These guys are, like, just poking. And I should get a nice shot into one of their front holes right here because I'm a big, bad tiger mouse, right? I got all kinds of armor. Here we go. Shoot. Okay. Crit, no damage. And he, uh, so I missed the uh, hitbox. And then I eat another shot because I'm not smart enough to get out of the way. And now I'm not fast enough to get out of the way. So I have uh, bounced 390, and I have zero damage. So we're doing really well. This was the last game of that night, and it made me go, I'm out of here. Screw this. Just very, very frustrating. And it's a one-off, guys. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just have that bad game. I get tracked right there, and they're just waiting to pop around and finish off the uh, Tiger Mouse. Here comes the T95. I'm like, ah. Uh... There we go. Got him. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, no, no damage. None. <laughs> so that happened that night I stopped playing right there you know what happens zero damage games we all have them but this was the cherry on top of a very frustrating session and so the next day came and here's what happened so the next day I have a little time in the afternoon I sit down to play hoping that things will get better and my first game is this game we're in the Lorraine 50T 
a fast heavy tank, bottom tier and a two tier battle, so not a big deal. I'm looking over at the other team. I'm like, you know what, I should do well over here. Not too worried about any of this, to be honest. The M454's got really good armor. That could be a bit of an issue. The rest of it, I shouldn't have any trouble. And for some unknown reason, again, one of those things you just can't, uh, you just can't predict, right? A, a T10 just decides to come raging around the corner. So that's fine, I'll shoot him. And then he's followed up by a T57 right there, right? So now I have, I am face to face with a YOLO T10 who's coming at mock snot and a T57. And there's no accounting for this. Who knows why this guy's doing this, right? But he's decided to do it. Maybe he felt like he had enough backup back there. You know, the guys are just tearing him up. I'm gonna come around here. I think I'm gonna go after the T57. Unfortunately, he pays attention to me. It takes me a while to get my gun because why? I'm auto aimed to the T10 like a Muppet. I get one bounce right there. And we'll try to kill this dude. There we go. The 121 gets knocked into the water. Does he actually die there? He might, I don't know. And I've lost half my hit points, right? I just, nothing to be done for it right there. We'll come, we'll get a nice shot there. That worked out. And okay, so not a not a huge disaster. We have lost a T62. It looks like we got a good amount of our top tanks up here. We'll go ahead and go hold down. We got a pretty good turret on this tank. It does have a tumor. A nice little shot there, 423, and things are looking up, right? Last night was terrible. Today doesn't look terrible so far. So we'll just keep working on these guys. They've turtled up. We have some uh, various mediums and whatnot, but I'm not really liking what I'm seeing over on the other side. The tortoise and the badger take a snap at that, but that's no good. Not really a snap, but kind of a shot as he moves back and forth. Nothing happened in there. And I'm wondering, like, you know, we, we maybe need to push these guys here, to be honest. We do seem to have a bit of an overmatch on them. If I look at all the tanks that are lit, there's not a whole lot here. But we'll keep working. It won't be foolish. I don't have the hit points or the armor to push anyway. So maybe it's not exactly the right time. And everything's looking pretty good. Conway gives me some damage right there. Figure the T95 might get in. He misses, unfortunately. And it's looking good. We should be all right. This is not a miserable Monday. We're at 2,300 damage. We had 1,000 blocked. We did lose those hit points early on, but doing a decent job of maintaining. Our mana core gets pushed away from the middle. That starts to spell a little bit of trouble. 1390 is rolling around up there, and maybe they're pushing down. We should shred them. Who knows? Panzer 7's coming in. Here comes their push in the north. Panzer 7 goes, so I figure we might as well push these guys. Let's get in here. Get him out. I take a little stun. Try to avoid getting hit by this guy. We'll hide behind the dead tank. The stun out there goes the WZ. He hits me, unfortunately. That's no good, but happens. Put a shot into his side. Try to hide again. And I know they have an artillery. But look what's going on in the north. Everything was, was looking good. More or less. Now, not so much. There we go. All right, that works. WZ is doing a nice job. Already slaps me for 365. Fantastic. Hurts my chances for sure. Take a bad shot into the side. WZ is doing some nice work. T95 looks like he's going to come finish me off. I've got 3,200 damage. But look at the rest of the team. They've disappeared. The whole north side just went away. The push got roughed up. They had the Leopard and the Selma, the T10, the T95 rolling around. So that little push, although it looked like a great idea at the time, probably wasn't the best idea. And I'm really hoping that we can sort of come back, but you're looking at a map with zero map control at this point. Already takes a stab at me. Very lucky he didn't finish me off right there. And now I'm worried about where's this T-57, because he's, he's a one-shot, but so am I. Try to get rid of the stun, and now they're wrapping around, and we've just got no map control. Unfortunately, we have people on all sides of us. Not very easy right here to sort of bring this back. There's plenty of tank, their tanks up on, the, up on our cap, pushing around behind. So the 122 and the Badger are in big trouble, being shot from multiple directions. Badger dies. That's not good. And now we're just losing tanks and hit points. Unfortunately, I proxy like him, so it's, I'm not going to surprise him. I'm not really sure which way he's pointed, to be honest. 
I'm doing that to kind of peek around and see, yep, his gun was pointed at me. I could also zoomed out and tried that. Camera can get wonky around the buildings like that. And essentially just waiting to die, right? I'll, I'll be lucky to get one more shot. I've got 3,677 damage. Come around here and see if we can't sneak another shot into somebody. Get lucky somehow. This dude's coming in. So he's taking a shot. We'll hopefully surprise him and boom, got rid of him. Very good. But we're down to two tanks, fellas. So honestly, the night before, terrible session. This was an okay start. I was a little bit surprised that we were looking really good, I thought. And then all of a sudden, everyone just dies up in the north. Nothing I can do about that, right? I'm not up there. Those guys just lost wholesale up in the north, even though it was relatively even. Our push probably lost a few hit points more than we wanted to. Our T95 died. The Panzer VII died up there. Progetto came in, he died. We just did we just did poorly on the push. We got a T95, the Conway, and the M454. They got about four of us, and then they were able to hide enough that we couldn't really push in, and then when they took the north, it's over. So, what are you gonna do? They just outplayed us right here. And then this this game happened. So I looked at the players on that last game. And the skill was about the same, more or less, right? It wasn't too bad. I'm here now on the KR. We're here on Malnoka. I have selected my vision setup. You'll notice I have Binox. I got it. All right, that's not the best thing, but I've got my CVS binoculars and optics. I'm going to try to do potentially some spout, scouting, some spouting. I'm doing some spouting and do some scouting. All right, my options here are to go up the hill. And honestly, I wish I had gone up the hill. So this now comes back to... What did you do in the game to help it be a disaster? Potentially this. I went to the middle to look at, to try to use a little bit of binoculars there, maybe do some spotting. I was hoping that we had enough heavies that were going to go up the hill, but you will notice that we have an IS-3 and a TS-54, which is actually pretty good. They have an IS-2 and a Nurgle. They have an Iron Arnie, another pretty tough tank for up there, an Obsidian, a tough tank for up there as well, a Grom, and some other heavies like the T-29 and the IS. But we have, it's not bad. Um, I would say some might even argue that we have a bit of an advantage, although the Lorraine is kind of brutal, and the Iron Arnie for mediums where we're running with a Lance and C and K46, M46 KR. So like I said at the beginning, I could have gone up the hill, but with this light of armor on a medium, I don't know how long it would have lasted. More than likely, I would have been prioritized by the tanks up there. Sometimes that's actually useful because then your heavies don't get shot and maybe they can get some work done. But I decided to head up here and see what I can do. Maybe kick off the Binox. I know. I know. Uh, 2011 called and they want their game back, right? Okay. Noted. So we've got an E25. The Lanson's right there. Everything's looking okay. Now, come to find out after we see what happens with this game that there was a massive skill disparity in this game. The other team just had better players by a bunch. Even, even with me on the team, I tend to skew teams uh, in the positive for skill. If you're a good player, then over time, generally, your teams will have a slightly better win rate just because everything else will even out, and it's your skill that is the constant. Okay, So every team you're on, your skill is the constant. So once you average out the skill with it, if you're better than the average player or a lot better than the average player, your teams will generally have a better chance to win. That's just the way it is. Be a skill. All right. But this team was low. It was extremely low. And I can't know that. And sometimes you can tell by the way they're, they're uh, deploying, but I don't really see that. Not too much. This is not a terrible deployment. All right. The Forest Spirit, I get it. You're going to hang out. You don't want to go up the hill. Noted. Lanson, not my favorite spot for the Lanson, but he did get some early shots and points, although he's about to get deleted. That's You can't just sit there. That long. In fact, he might be FK. He's not even moving right now. So I don't know exactly what the Lanson's doing. 1357, okay. Some some TDs watching down in the south. Fine. They're the tier 7 TDs. Not a huge loss. And initially, I thought things were going pretty well up the hill. I saw the IS-3 getting in there, getting damaged. I'm going to just miss this shot because I'm a terrible shot. That was an awful choice, at least for aiming. Uh, I think maybe the Yeah, somebody shot that way. I think the Lanson. Yeah, so he's AFK or something. I'm not really sure what's going on there. We'll miss this shot. Fantastic. And it is interesting, I would also say, with World of Tanks, is 
Some early missed shots in what's going to be a fairly close situation can be brutal for your team. It can be. It can be the difference between winning and losing a flank. Although, as you can see, nothing good is going on up there with that flank up there. The uh, TDS-54 is kind of beat up. The IS-3 is beat up. They've got a lot of their hit points. I'm not seeing a lot of hit points missing from theirs. Our Grom is thumped. I'm going to try to hit this guy. Bounce off him because he's got pretty good armor. Doink. Nothing. So the Nurgle goes in, and now they're going to finish off the one-shot TS-54. We get one hit on the Udez. I mean, my goodness, the Udez is up there. Good on him. Good on him, right? Skill disparity. The enemy team, and look at that, boom, boom, boom. Three of our best tanks gone. The Udez actually went up there and brought his gun into the game. I got to fall back. I'm going back to the magic force, and there's just really nothing good that's going to happen from here. I'm going to have to shoot gold at the front of heavies trying to come off the hill. There's a Grom and an ISU, and I reacted a little bit late, so I'm not really going to get over here in time to get any really great shots. That, yeah, I mean, that's never going to pan. It's an IS-2-2. It's just a dumb shot. So bad decisions on my part. Bad positioning. Not any really good shots. Let's see if we can get a shot off of him. Bounce that. All right. Maybe the ISU can get a shot or get some spotting. I'm going to have to fall back to these bushes. And it's 5-1, to one, guys. There's a massive skill disparity. All our good tanks are dead. The Lance and C is still sitting there. I'm assuming he's AFK still. Doesn't seem to be moving. How he's still alive, I don't know. You would think somebody from above would have already taken him out. It's very strange that he's even alive right there. Here comes the Grom. An IS. Let's see if we get a shot on him, maybe. Ricochet. So, <laughs> oh God. I have 256 damage, right? So even though you make bad decisions and your team is bad... You know, it, it feels worse when you have, you know, bounces. You can't get the gun to work. You're not really getting good shots because you're not in a good position. Tank doesn't have a lot of penetration anyway, even though I'm spamming the APCR right here. And the team's just getting absolutely rolled up. Their Iron Army's pushing down into the south. So that's definitely problematic for an E25 and an IKV. The Panther, I he sat there. I don't know if he even... Panther may have been AFK too. I don't know if the Panther actually moved, to be honest. Where did he die? No, he's up against the rock. So he did go to the rock and kind of sit there. And it is now 11 to 1, guys. Miserable Monday, right? The night before, the first game. The second game, got some damage. Maybe not that terrible. Third game, there's my second shot of damage. And I just get absolutely massacred here. <laughs> I do get one more shot on the ground, though. A little power slide to bring the uh, the gun online. Not quite enough to kill him. What did I hit him with? Did I HE that guy? No. That's interesting. I'm not sure what what damage did I do to him. Oh, it doesn't matter because there's still the bug where you can't go back up. All right, next battle. <laughs> All right, so then I roll the next battle, right? I'm fine. Okay, you know, one and one today. That didn't go great, but I did, you know, 3,800 damage to the one before that one. Whatever, bad team, stuff happens. Kind of frustrating, but I'm in the Selma. Let's go play the Selma. Maybe not the best choice when I'm having a bad day because I don't play this thing very well, to be quite honest. But here we are in Himmel's Cliffdorf, and I'm going to... One thing that happens for me, and I don't know if you guys do this, but if I'm having a bad day or things aren't working, I just sort of throw caution to the wind and just start raging around. Because sometimes you have that big game that's that's fun and funny and it works, but sometimes it just makes you more angry because you just made bad decisions. So we have an encounter mode here. I don't have a lot of good plans for the Selma on this map. This The Selma needs to get to the mid to late game to be really effective, and this is a very punchy face map. There's not a whole lot of places you can go to be, to be having clever shots. One of them is around the center hill right over here on the three and four column so i'm planning on going over here and maybe i can get some cheeky shots maybe i can gun down somebody who tries to push up maybe i can get around the south side and start spotting guys let's see what happens the danger of course is you're going to cross this open area but i'm fast right and surely there's not a lot of fast tanks that are going to be immediately there right there they are watch this
you know, you take a chance, RNG and dispersion and the random rolls have their, uh, have their say. And all of a sudden, uh, crossing at mock snot, I have two guys that just snap some shots off and they both hit and they both pin. <laughs> Not surprised they pin because this thing has no armor. A little bit surprised they both hit me, but there you go. And I've lost half my hit points. Now I'll take that in the context of the night before, the context of the last two battles. I'm actually sitting there, right there going, that's, I paused for a second and just, I had to uh, gather myself, right? Because things had been going poorly. Okay, a little bit of a comeback, this is all good. <laughs> now, what I suspect happened there is the Artie was aiming in because the Blesk was there. This is something to think about, fellas. The Blesk was there, and that is a very standard spot for Artie to look, especially if somebody gets on that ramp because it's pretty easy Artie shots. So he was probably looking at the Blesk, and when I killed the Mars and tried to back out, he was easily able to move the aim point over there. Probably wasn't even fully aimed, but it got close enough and dropped 313 on me. So just like that, in a minute, I have lost, what, two-thirds of my hit points. And I've done 96 damage, one kill. And again, take it into the context of the last three or four games. And tilt, tilt has happened, right? Tilt has happened. But I'm going to play carefully. I'm going to try to do the best that I can. There's a Selma. Maybe I can get some cheeky shots on this guy. That's back out of that. Watch the Artie take another shot at me. Okay, he's not ready. There it goes. All right, one of the Artie anyway is going a different direction. That's fine. To be honest, I sort of expected to get pushed by the Burr and taken out. But he's probably smart enough to not do that because he knows he'll get shot at. Unlike me. Unlike me. So hard to use this spot when you don't have any hit points for votes. So the object's kind of hanging out right there. So let's see what we can do with him. Side armor. So we'll just come out. Take some nice shots at this guy. No, that didn't work. All right. Uh-oh. Woo! The mill took a stab at me. We'll hit reload. Grom's coming in. Not quite ready to help him. There's a T-54 there as well. And I'm just pinned, right? This can be another frustrating part of the game. You've lost hit points. You're in not a great spot. I can't use my speed or my maneuverability here. I don't have any hit points. I don't have any armor. So basically, I've taken myself mostly out of the game, and I am only reactionary, looking to jump out and take things out that are very low hit points because I can't really afford for somebody to hit me. So I wait right here, and T-54 doesn't. Oh, this guy looks. Okay. Ah, geez, a whole 11 hit points will back out. He did not sell out enough for me to get him. Thinking a little bit about that already there. Charge going in. I really wanted to follow up with him, but I just felt like I would get prioritized. So they thump the char. He gets one shot off of those guys. Here comes the ho -ri. Now I'm waiting for that opportunity. right? Maybe I can do something with this. A whole 153 hit points. Oh, Reed's trying to get in there. There's the Arty, so one of the Arty shoots at him. This goes back to the thing with the Blesk and the Mars right there. They don't. They know I'm there, but I'm not currently lit. If I run out there, even if I'm able to time the Barask and the T-54 to not take a hit from one of those two, I'm going to be lit, and then the Arty will have the opportunity. I see this guy go. I try to... Now nah, he dives off the edge. That's a bummer. Somehow he lives. Okay, we got the whole Reed moving in there. And this is starting to look like a pretty good situation. There Selma tears up the Ho-Ri. Looks like the Char may be going to finish this guy off. Puts one hit on him. And I just can't find a place, guys, because there's still the Emil. There's still the LT-432 over there. Artie's been shooting elsewhere. Watch this. I think it's right here. There we go. Shots. Oh, oh, hitting the rock. Okay, reload. That's <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that's the other Artie. <laughs> and frustration, man. Absolutely triggered. 100% tilt. 
52 hit points. We've done 370. We have a kill. We have 92 assists. Just a absolute non-factor in this game, other than soaking up some artillery shots. So watch this. We come over here. And we see the Scorpion G. All right, good. So we'll let it zoom in. Put some shots on him. Yeah, there we go. Do, 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 do. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. All right. We'll get a reload. Do, do. We'll head on over this way. No problemo. <laughs> yep. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I should have quit. That's what I'm going to tell you. I should have quit right there. All right, so a miserable Monday journey. Let's see, how do we get here? Zero damage game out of the game on Himmelsdorf the night before. Semi-rage quit. Next day, Fjords did 3,800 damage, had an okay game. Team collapsed. Okay. Malinovka, huge skill disparity issue. I go to a crappy place. Complete romple stomp disaster. Do 400 damage, whatever it was. Cliff, put myself in a crap situation, completely triggered, uh, on tilt, get stuck there, hit by RD three times or whatever it was, the snap at the beginning. So the genius that I am, let's play another one. And when I need a comfort tank, when I'm having a day like that, I quite often go to my mana core and I get Ensk. And then I get this deployment. Just See guys there, I'm not going to shoot because I know there's multiple guys down there. I, that EBR knows, probably knows it's me to be honest. Because he's moving back and forth right there trying to find me. I'm not going to shoot, I'm just keeping these guys lit. I think you can see the problem with the deployment at this point. Can't really get any shots here. I'm going to see if we can get the uh, 4005 and boom. Crit, no damage. I mean, it's uh, it's on brand, fellas, for today. Or that day. More tilt. And there's nobody out there, so there's no reason for me to go there. I already see the 110s there. Multiple others. The 4005, the Centurion, the Conway's in the middle. There's still multiple things down there. Let me just shoot a 4, 430U. That's a genius idea. Oh, maybe the calling. Finally get a shot. Oh, look out. A three marked 53-55. Who is really late in repositioning. I'm surprised he didn't uh, move much earlier than that. 113 GFT is getting massacred. I'm just looking for maybe a shot here, potentially. We'll just fade away because I'm a little too close. I want to get someplace where I can kind of hide out and get a shot. There we go. All right, got a little more damage. Probably not the best way. I should have gone the other way, to be honest. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay, already thumps him. Good. 4,005 takes a hit. Let's see. We'll shoot him. And nope. Oh, here comes the EBR. He misses me. That guy misses me. But already. <laughs> what? <laughs> already takes a shot. Here comes the EBR. All right, here we go. Mm, boom. Nope. Shoot behind him. Miss behind him. Good job. Can I get away from him before he hits me? Hard to tell. Okay. Power slide. And the disaster commences. 0 and 4. Completely surrounded. Absolutely left the back door open. Trying to get a shot on these guys somewhere. Maybe I can cross here. Uh, nope. Oh, whack. Boom. Yeah, whatever. No, no aiming needed, man. Just point. Watch this. I'm going to ram the EBR, right? Because I have, I'm have i pretty good at the ramming thing. Watch this. We'll just get a shot on with auto-aim. We'll shoot him. And... Ah! <laughs> the Artie shot at me again. I don't know if you noticed that, but the Artie just shot at me again. <laughs> this will be a shot right into the back end. Yeah, this one. No, see, when you shoot into the corner... Of the tracks, then you uh, bounce on the angled armor instead of sit shooting into the back flat part of the armor. Oh my gosh. All right, we got this. Here we go. Finally, 1,200 damage, 1,200 assist. 
it is a two to ten battle. The one ten is chasing me around. I'm driving backwards, which is no bueno. He shoots that guy. Let's shoot him. No, nope, we'll just bounce because we took a bad shot. So that was really nice. That guy hits me. Whatever. Oh, great. We get hit by the uh, T30, but it doesn't kill me. The T30's probably pissed. <laughs> Where's the T30 anyway? Oh, he was coming down the road. Holy cow, the poor T30. That should have finished me off. Woohoo! Oh, we'll bounce off him by another bad shot. What do I say about 4,005s, my friends? And honestly, that was, that was, it was all weighing down on me, those four battles on this day and the fifth one the day before. And the, the triggered slash tilt action was absolutely phenomenal at this point. But that was it. When the 4,005 finally came around the corner, and that was the thing that nuked me. That's what I say, man. If I'm playing a if I'm playing a mana core and there's a four thousand five, it will be the thing that kills me every freaking time. And there you go, just annihilated. Not that it mattered much. I only had four hundred thirty seven hit points, but there you go. So I put the game down, and I want to say this was Wednesday. It's Sunday now, and I haven't played it again. I'll be honest. I'm not sure when I'll come back to it. Maybe later today. Maybe I'll take a shot. But I've downloaded a couple other games, playing a couple other things, and uh, yeah, that's where I am. That's where I am on it. I mean, th that Wednesday, it just that one just filled up the frustration meter to full, and it, you know the frustration meter always goes up and down. This one finally topped out and has been stuck there since since this little session of four games. Happens to everybody. Wow, wow get over it, all that good stuff, but it's a lot, it is, the game has a lot of RNG, the game has a lot of variation in matchmaker, you can be put on a series of really bad teams, you can be put on a series of really good teams, if I go 10-0 and 0 or have a session of 65% win rate solo, that's not all me, a lot of times there's some luck, a lot of times I've, a couple good teams carry me, sometimes it has a lot to do with me doing really well in some games, but it's certainly not all me doing it. Just like if you have a bad series of games like this, it's not necessarily all you. But as we talked about on Sunday on Coffee Talk, a lot of times, most of the time, you should really go into it trying to do your best and, and have a good, as good a game as you can. And as you can see with these, I wasn't, right? I was not doing very well. So the, the combination of the bad teams, the sometimes bad mate, matchmaker in there, picking a mana core and getting freaking ansk, you know, RNG and dispersion screwing with it, and then add on top of that a healthy dose of sucking, you know, a lot while playing. You can see how sometimes that frustration can reach the the absolute top. And we all go through that. The key is to go do something else or figure it out or soldier through it or whatever. But I'm, I got to tell you, right now this is unusual for me, but it has been four days or so, three or four, really, since I played. Maybe there's a couple games in there at some point, but I haven't played much since this. I'm gonna have to. I'm going to have to let it work out, all right? <laughs> have to let it work itself out. So there you go. A miserable Monday uh, journey. I don't know if any of that is worth anything to anybody other than me cry-assing about it. But, hey, I feel better. <laughs> good one. See ya.